Pioneering brain surgery. They won't be putting any screws right there, will they? Is Jared Buckhalter's last hope to overcoming his addiction to opioids. Jared, we gotta test you right now, okay? We gotta stimulate to test you a little bit, okay? okay? He is the first patient in this clinical trial at West Virginia University. Opiates. 15. Doctors will insert this long string of metal into his brain to control his cravings. We were given exclusive access to film before, during, and after surgery. Craving benzos. About 30 pounds. If successful, doctors hope it could be rolled out more widely and put a dent in an opioid epidemic, which claims about 128 lives per day. Jared Buckhalter thinks this is his last chance. The surgery comes with risks of infection, bleeding, and memory problems. Now I'm thinking what I get myself into. <laughs> Jared only qualified for this procedure because he had tried everything else to get sober. My understanding was it was like a probe that would it, it is. insert into it. It's, it's going to be deeper. Okay. And it's really thin. Like, and I, I've seen, I think, the piece. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, showed it to Yeah, thin. perfect. This part goes into brain and then these other parts go behind your ear, under your skin, to a pacemaker battery that gets implanted in your chest under your collarbone. And this device sends the electrical signals to the pacemaker wire that's implanted in the brain to electrically regulate the brain area involved in addiction. I said, no way. Right. <laughs> Are you crazy? But once you start doing a little more research and then you start reading more and saying, okay, well, maybe there's a chance here. Deep brain stimulation has been around for 30 years. It's used to treat conditions such as Parkinson's disease, tremors, obsessive compulsive disorder, and epilepsy. But this is the first time doctors are using it for addiction. This is the trajectory that we're working on now. So that's where the electrode is gonna go. There's a specific part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens, and uh, it's the reward center of the brain. And this part of the brain is electrically malfunctioning and chemically malfunctioning in those who have addiction. For 18 years, Jared was high on painkillers and heroin all the time. He tried all kinds of opioid addiction treatments like Suboxone, meetings, rehab, therapy, but he always came back around to the drugs. I would get my drugs and I wouldn't leave my bedroom for the most part. Jared grew up in Dillner, Pennsylvania, a small town less than four miles from West Virginia, the state with the highest rate of drug overdose deaths in the US. For him, it all started with high school sports, when he dislocated his shoulder playing football and had to get surgery. They prescribed me pain pills, and I probably got them a little, um, a little longer than I should have. Right off the jump, I was addicted to them. They were oxycodone pills. The opioid was first mass produced by Purdue Pharma in 1996. With an aggressive marketing campaign, sales grew from $48 million to more than $1 billion in just four years. Along with its generic forms, Oxycontin was heavily prescribed for all kinds of bodily pain. By 2004, it had become a leading drug of abuse in the United States. Jared remembers the first time he took one. I felt like I arrived. I was able to socialize so much easier. Everything that was a little difficult became very easy and I love that. It gave me a feeling that nothing in this world could ever come close to. Um, just so numb and um, just so good. I loved Oxycontin 30s. I would have 120 of those a month and they would be gone in five days. Studies show that high school students who play sports have a greater risk of opioid misuse than those who do not. Jared's addiction became a lifestyle that followed him into adulthood. At one point, most of his salary went to buying pills until he lost his job and couldn't afford them anymore. We started dabbling in the heroin because it was cheaper and better. Then things really went downhill. Quite frankly, I didn't care if I died. One day I was at work and he called me and he said, Mom, he said, I'm going to die if you don't help me. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I'm addicted to pain pills, and I have to take more and more and more to get the same effect. Oh, the amount of drugs that he was on was lethal. At the rate I was going, I was gonna die, without a doubt. Um, I was gonna overdose. It was just a matter of time. Now he finds himself getting ready for surgery. 
from the start here, just a little bit of medicine here and there. I'll let you know if we're doing everything. Uh, I, I want something for anxiety. Period. Okay. I have a little bit of, I mean, it's not for anxiety, but I have a little bit of Tylenol that I'm going to be giving here shortly as well. Tylenol isn't for anxiety. It is not. Before the surgery, doctors record Jared's response to images of drugs to later keep track of his progress. He will be awake for about 80% of the long procedure. The way this works is we're both recording from this area when we show the patient a stimulus that induces a craving to get an idea of the biological signal that his brain is sending out. And then at the same time, we're able to stimulate and kind of block that craving signal coming from the brain that's going to make him want to do the things that he does. Cocaine. Zero. Heroin. Zero. Opiates. Uh, 40. Nicotine. 100. Move. Uh, 85. 85% close to the place. 85% to the place. Yes, right. sir. That's the washer. Awesome, dear. What's up? The operation was a success. For the first time since he was a teenager, Jared has been able to stay clean. In August, he celebrated 11 months sober. Most of the time when I would have cravings, they would be so strong and they just would not go away. I would start obsessing about it. Now they're, they're fleeting thoughts. We're seeing great signals that he's um, reduced his cravings, he's not taking drugs, and he's, uh, he's now on the job. More than 19 million Americans suffer from addiction. Doctors hope they can get past the trials and use it as a treatment for some of those people. But it would most likely be used only in extreme cases like Jared's, because brain surgery is risky. I think this is the first step in hopefully curing the compulsive element of unhealthy behaviors, including addiction which would obviously be a major breakthrough. It's a long way, isn't it? Man. For Jared and his parents, it's nothing short of a miracle. Thank God they picked him. And the other side is, we're in a situation where they had to pick him. Right, how, how did we get here? How did we get, to, did we get I mean, here? How did we get to this extreme? Right. But, you know, there's and light at the end of the tunnel now. To be continued. <laughs>